Hey there, this is Mark from Alien Seed Tech. I'm going to show you the PSDN, the Poseidon CV envelope generator. Uh, basically making an, uh, an instrument from scratch with a Thor and a couple of PSDNs. And what you're listening to right now is my previous attempts at making this video and really utterly failing because of stupid audio level issues or video quality issues, etc. So, quick check to make sure everything's good. Yes. So, I'm going to start from scratch and I'll switch over once it's ready to play. up to CV input 1 and 2, make them unipolar, and then on the programmer, both of these, I'm going to check receive notes, and then I'm going to wire top one up to, whoops, for the Thor, I'm going to wire up the uh, CV inputs 1 and 2 to the frequency knobs on the filters. Change, uh, changes to the same patch. Just a basic sound bank, factory sound bank patch. And then I'm actually going to take the filter and tack all the way down so that my filter is the only thing that's affected. I'll go ahead and mute it as you play. So you can see it is in fact affecting these two linearly. All right. So let me switch over. Alright. Hopefully that's good. Now let me turn off the second one. Let me just make it uh, an attack and decay. That right now. Now, this is linear. This is not linear. So I did negative. Back to linear. it. So each of these knobs means spend. Okay, if it's negative, spend as much time, well, spend a lot of time on the beginning of the ramp. If it's positive, spend a lot of time on the end of the ramp. The ramp's going up for attack, down for decay and release. Here. At all, but just in case. Alright, negative again. Let me change functions. Subtle differences. Alright, now if I do midpoints, if I get to midpoints after I do shapes. And actually, let me link it first before I get into that. 
So I'm going to stick with this. I have the link. I want to make this loop so it's obvious what's going on. I'm going to start with the decay. So at the top of the ramp, it's going to start using this. All right. Now, notice what happens when I apply the link scale knob positive value. Negative value. Positive value. See it, you can't hear it as well. It's, like, it's not coming through right, but positive means it um, it's scaled more when the first envelope is high. For negative, it means it's scaled more when it's low. Uh, so then, when it's low or high, then it's the inverse of that. So it changes it according to the output level of this envelope. It changes the added stuff. So you can actually add something in. I do that above, way up here. Right now, this is being triggered by this, with this extra link right here. This is an earlier version. So the first one, SNR, and then it's being added back into the inputs here. This is the same thing for our purposes of that. And it's adding this to that using this scale, just like it's adding this to that using the same scale. So basically, it's pretty easy to hook up a whole bunch of these together, loop them, trigger each other, do whatever, and add them all back into a common envelope that you can then drive anything with. And I could drive, you know, driving something with this main envelope that's uh, linked, I could drive other parameters using just this, just this. Um, I could drive stuff using just every time this attack is triggered, right here. Or this sustain, or this attack, delay, etc. So basically it's, uh, you know, have at it. Do a lot. We get back to the. Let's see what's going on here. Oh, you were actually hearing both there. My apologies. So this is the one I was just creating. Let me do the uh, the second frequency filter. This is this one right here, the low pass. All right. I'm gonna use shapes. So this is what a double shape sounds like. I just have these set to be to look the same, but it's not, not actually in effect. All right, so it's going to repeat these. Now, if I move the midpoint, it's similar to this curve amount, but it's uh, it's the overall midpoint of this this curve. Alright. Let me choose an S curve instead. Go back to no midpoints. So those are positive values. Basically it takes the inverse of these knobs for the first half and then the normal this knob for the second half. So right here, this would be zero would mean just the ramp, normal linear ramp, and then the curve. This would be curve and then linear ramp. This would be curve, curve, curve. That would be an S curve plus uh, an extra one of these. So negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, positive, negative, positive, positive. So it looks kind of confusing, but basically they're all just permutations of up to four combinations of these. So this is a double S curve right here. We mess with the uh, midpoints again. I'll push it to positive. Positive and negative. So those should be up high. Irrespective of this right here, it would be some negative. 
So this one I have, uh, this is hooked up to kind of the left side, this is on the right side, and this is on the extreme left side, or further to the left side, just to give it, just to buttress it. This is my previous take. I screwed something up, I forget what it was. <laughs> anyway, uh... Bear with me here, I'm uh, just figuring out how to do this as I do it, experimenting. Hopefully this will work better, this is a, a higher bit rate and a lower resolution. Uh, and I've tried to adjust the audio levels. So hopefully this gives a better demonstration of the easy things to do with the beside envelope generator. Um, and gives more accurate representation of what it sounds like. Um, if it doesn't, I'll be re-uploading. And I only covered a fraction of what I can do, but I covered the basics, the most important bits. The rest of it's not all as important as that. I guess I can uh, talk about the poly menu here. Uh, first, the gate velocity. I don't know if it's going to work right here. If I had a much lower gate, so it would give a, uh, it would launch these at a lower velocity compared to a, a high gate velocity. Whoops. <laughs> I forgot to give me space there. Anyway. The poly menu, it, uh, it's for triggering. Basically, if you're triggering with a matrix, it's not going to matter. It's for triggering with notes, drawn notes, sequence notes. Uh, it simulates polyphony by re-triggering for new notes, or monophony by triggering doing the same, and also triggering when a note is released and another note is still held. The hold notes in gates basically makes it stay on for as long as any note is on, which means if you're going to do, you're going to start putting your hands on a keyboard, the very first note will trigger it, and then as soon as you re finally release all of your fingers, then the envelope will so that might be a good thing for an overall filter effect, um, not just uh, a specific note effect. So it is a little limited in that it can actually generate multiple overlapping envelopes like a synthesizer can, or pretty much any instrument can. Uh, but someday that will be possible, given the right instrument, given the right device, maybe something I make, maybe uh, using, oh, just etc. Just, let me trail off on that one. But there are limitations there. It's, it's basically an effects device, and it can easily be used for situations like uh, like this. And I make a lot of music like this, where I just use matrices, matrices to drive stuff. You could also, of course, drive like have the uh, normal filter be uh, be something meaningful with the notes driving it, and then this is an overall uh, sequenced low pass filter sweep, sort of LFO sound, and you can draw this in instead of the matrix, you can draw in the notes on the uh, combinator overall, and drive all of these things, or just uh, create sequencer tracks for these two, etc. So, there's a lot of ways to use this. Um, that's about all I have time for, I gotta quit talking real soon, so uh, it's alien seedcom um, let me know what you think. Check it out in the recent shop, and if you ever get confused, you're trialing it, you're, uh, you bought it, click these question marks. And there are also manuals online, and you can always email me at support at alienseed.com. Alright, thanks a whole bunch.